Remember, this is a beta version of Minecraft. It's in progress. There are going to be bugs. And here is an example. I've ended up trapped inside my own body. And no, not metaphorically. I mean, literally, somehow I'm inside my own head right here. Uh, and as you can see, there's my name tag. There's my face. I can't get out. The game is broken. And this might happen to your world, which is why don't put a long-term world into this beta if you can avoid it. Anyway, welcome back to another Minecraft update news video. Today, I have the best sort of update news to share with you all because we have a brand new beta or snapshot version of 1.16 available to download. It's called 20W138 because it's the 13th week in 2020 and it has a brand new mob inside of it. The first ever friendly never mob. In fact, you know, not just neutral, actually friendly, even if you're mean to this thing, it still doesn't care too much about you. It still wants to be your friend and it will still let you ride it, which is a thing you can do too. It's a crazy mob in terms of what actually you can do with it and uh, it's not the only feature in this snapshot either because we have a brand new crafting recipe for Neverite among many other other things I'm sure you'll be interested in, such as renewable basalt, but we also have a lot of other update news that has come from outside the game, answering the most important question first and foremost, which is how will Minecraft be updated in these times of uh, everything shutting down? And there's just good news all around that I wanted to share and talk about in this video. Let's dive straight into it, shall we? And let's start with the brand new mob, because hey, there is something called the Strider in Minecraft right now, and the Strider in Minecraft really doesn't like being outside of lava. As you can see, if you notice, he's kind of shaking. It's not some weird bug, which is what I I thought at first, it is in fact that he's very cold because striders are most comfortable in lava. In fact, striders will in fact spawn in lava, uh, you know, most of the time, that is their spawning location, which means that striders are most comfortably found all the way out there. And it's tricky to get to them, I'll admit, if you don't have wings or, uh, you know, if you don't have a fire resistance potion, but it's totally worth doing so because if you can get your hands on a strider or you can lure one towards you, which you can do using warped fungus, so guess what, more uses for the warped, uh, you know, forest but if you can lure one of these guys towards you, which is hard to do out in the open lava oceans, but you can do it with the ones on the ground fairly easily. Uh, if you can get them towards you and you can put a saddle on them, then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to ride them just like this. And riding them is kind of fun. You can uh, make, you know, let them take you wherever you want to. It's kind of like a pig or a llama in Minecraft in that way, except kind of like a pig or a, you know, a kind of like a pig specifically, I should say. If you combine a fishing rod with warp fungus, you get a brand new item called the warp fungus on a stick. So this is. Uh, crafted just like this. You put the warp fungus uh, you know, to the bottom right of the stick and then you find yourself a brand new recipe which is going to be able to move the uh, you know animal forwards. There's a little bit of a catch here that you can't uh, you know like the uh, you know carrot on the stick. It doesn't really give a speed boost to the uh, you know to the strider once you feed it. It just seems to you know kind of amble along at its own rate but still it is a way to guide these things which means that yes our prayers that we've been saying forever have finally been answered. Would you like a way to travel across the level uh, you know, the lava in some form of boat is something, you know, we've all kind of been saying as a Minecraft community. And the way Mojang has responded has seems to be with, yes, you can have boats that go across the nether. By the way, the boats are actually a mob. They're adorable. They're the first, you know, friendly mob in the nether. Like, they, they only do positive things for you. They never attack you in exchange. And I think that's just the most adorable thing. Because look at this. You can even get two of them together if you want to. And it's the first, again, nether mob, which you, the player, can breed together if you want to. Um, as you can see, you grab... Uh, I can't breed them while I'm writing it, but um, if we get a couple of them together, you'll be able to see that you can actually, in fact, breed them together because they have a warp fungus as a breeding block, which means here's one for this guy, here's one for this guy. We get out of this so that none of them can care about us. And what's that? A baby strider. Yes, there are baby striders in this Minecraft update. Do you need to know anything more? No, you don't. It's the most adorable thing in the world. And yeah, the craziest bit is that the striders seem to actually ride other striders. Look at that. That strider is in fact on top of another strider because um, yeah, these never boat like mobs are something. <laughs> look, look at this. It's crazy. It's weird. It feels non Minecrafty in some ways. I hear a lot of people say, although a lot of things look like mods when they first come out. And it's just a very surreal feature to see here in Minecraft. So yeah, I really like the Striders. I think they're very adorable. I think their addition to Minecraft makes a lot of sense because it's making the Nether a more livable place with a brand new mob, which is the first friendly thing you can find there, the first utility mob you can find in the Nether. And just as a fun little side note here, um, if you want them to go faster, because right now they're the fastest way across lava, I would say for the most part, but if you want, you can splash yourself and the thing, and that means that you'll go just very slightly faster if you want to. So yeah, if you want to get around, you can use the Strider to get you across lava now. Just be 
warned, it's kind of dangerous getting off the strider in my experience. So just be a little bit extra careful when you do that. But yeah, super adorable way around the Never and an addition that makes the Never much more livable, kind of like this next one, which came in a couple of weeks ago, the Respawn Anchor. So the Respawn Anchor is fascinating. It's a way to set your spawn point in the Never. Uh, if you haven't seen that, that's a thing. It is a thing you can do. Um, however, previously you have to uh, you know activate it with Glowstone yourself. However, now you can put Glowstone in a dispenser and you can activate it that way. So this seems like a small change on the surface, but it does make the Never more livable because you can now have a system set up that'll do it automatically. You can do so with like you know something as simple as a pressure plate, like stand on it and then a pressure or send <laughs> pressure plate should be next to the dispenser. I should say stand on the pressure plate and then the dispenser will kick in and all of a sudden what's that? You've activated another uh, you know like charge of your life because every time you die you come back to this thing. Um, but also if you want to you can make the most 1.16 version of redstone possible because if you have a you know you can hook up the dispenser to pretty much any redstone thing possible including the target block. So when you get a debt when you get a perfect uh, bullseye on this you'll be rewarded with a fourth uh, thing in there or with uh, one that in general. So yeah do you want to use this with a coolest sound effect? You can now as of this update have a target block which will make that sound effect on loading or you can just use the target block to force people to play a fun game to get their respawn anchor to be refilled because again every time you die you lose a thing you have to charge your respawn anchor unlike in the overworld but speaking about things that happen in the overworld how about we go over there right now because there is a quite positive change they've made in this update over there wow we went through the nether portal and we ended up in a cave it's almost like it's a hint or a sign or something maybe there should be an update uh, that happens of a cave. I don't know what you know. I'm saying right here. Maybe you do. But also, here's an interesting thing about this update. Um, because in now you can actually make infinitely renewable base salt if you really want to. And it's a super weird thing that was counterintuitive for me to understand. But let me show you. Because if you have, uh, if which actually this is a simple way to put this. It's just like let's throw a single block back over there. Because let's show you the system. If you have lava and you have that lava go next to salt soil, not salt sand, a brand new salt soil block, the one that when you light it on fire goes. Blue. If you have soul soil, which is next to blue ice on one side and next to lava on another, you'll be able to create base salt. It's a, again, it's this complex interaction on the surface. Uh, it can be explained by just saying, uh, you know, soul sand plus lava plus, uh, sorry, soul soil plus lava plus blue ice equals base salt. But basically, you can now make a cobblestone generator if you want to using this precise technique. It works exactly like a cobblestone generator in that, like, every single time it resets, you get yourself a brand new base salt. And now, if you want to, you can farm this brand new block close to infinite if you really want. And I think that's kind of cool if you want to get this in large quantity. Also, zombie pigmen are really loud. Do you ever realize that until you have a bunch of them just following you around in the other world? Because I certainly didn't. Anyway, with that said, yeah, infinitely renewable base salt, which can be polished with a furnace, of course, to make two brand new infinitely renewable blocks. Even if you never, uh, you know, even if you never care about the, uh, you know, the brand new dimension, even if you never care about all the brand new uh, biomes, as long as you go in there once to pick up some soul soil, you can get yourself some infinitely renewable base salt. You don't have to find them naturally generating, which some people might really appreciate, because it certainly is a more attractive cobblestone, I think will agree. For those of you who didn't see the respawn anchor, as you can see, respawned in the nether because I had one of these. And now all I have to do is press the button and it's fully charged again. Wow, so handy, right? Anyway, the next part of this update is something that is super fascinating because it seems like it's a never feature at first and it is a great never feature in terms of giving us a brand new use for neverite and indeed a brand new use for chiseled stone bricks. Because in 1.16, you'll be able to take one of your Neverite ingots and you'll be able to surround it by eight chiseled stone bricks, just like this, and you'll be able to make yourself a lodestone. So this lodestone is a pretty cool looking block by itself, some could say. I mean, I like it. I think it has an interesting uh, vibe to it. It's clearly a very expensive block to make. I mean, it takes a Neverite ingot just to craft, so that's something interesting. But the thing about these that are so interesting is that you can use them with a compass and you can, because, uh, you know, in the, in the Nether, compasses don't work at all, right? So here's a way to use the compass in the nether because you can sync a compass with the lodestone to make your compass always points towards that. As you can see, it says a lodestone compass, so it kind of changes from being a regular compass to being a special one, and now it will always point you towards the lodestone. So just to prove that, I'll do a full rotation right here. As we're over here, as you can see, it rotates to follow that precisely. The direction of the compass is always going to follow the lodestone, and that means if you need to find your nether base, you want to find your way home, uh, you can always do so just like this. If you put a lodestone next to your, uh, you know, like next to your, you know, base, for instance, or even next to your respawn anchor, you can do something even cooler because, hey, here's your lodestone, here's your respawn anchor. If you place them close enough together, 
because you can actually reset the, the location one of these things, uh, then you'll always be able to know where home is. Am I over here and I'm lost? Like, where's home? I forgot where home is. Is it that way? Is it that way? Oh, wait a minute. I have the respawn anchor. I have the lodestone compass pointing to my respawn anchor, which means it's over there. So this seems like a really cool feature for the never, right? It allows you to finally use the compasses here. Um, however, it's also a handy feature for the end and for the overworld. Also, quick little on-the-spot test that I just came up with. Do you think because the lodestone has neverite inside of it, it will survive a trip into lava? Because I think it should, but I don't think it does. It doesn't. Pro tip, don't throw lodestones in lava. They do not survive the journey. <laughs> But yeah, what you can actually do is even these lodestone compasses, which by the way, if they're synced to one in the nether, they really won't like the overworld, kind of like how an overworld compass doesn't like the nether. But yeah, you can sync this to a lodestone in the overworld as well, which will always point you towards that. No longer will you have compasses which point towards spawn. Instead, your spawn point, as far as a compass is concerned, can be located anywhere. And again, just to remind you, you can have multiple lodestones, as many as you want in your world, in fact, and you can have multiple lodestone compasses as well. So let's put one towards this one, one towards towards that one, and you can use this for like circumnavigation. You can work out your rough distance from uh, you know, like both these things just by using the two compasses because if you know like the further away the compasses get the closer They'll be to pointing the same way which means yeah, you can use uh, you know triangular navigation in Minecraft It's a bit complex to explain while in a cave So how about we do it this way we place one lodestone here and then about ten blocks apart over here We have a second lodestone. We have one lodestone compass point over here We have one point over here if the lodestones are perfectly opposite each other There's only one point in your world you can be which is directly between the two However, as you go further away in either direction, you should be able to both know which what points back to home, because if you have one on each side of it, you can see how home is generally that way if you average out the two compasses. However, the further away you get, the distance between the two needles will get smaller and smaller, and you can use this for a bunch of, uh, you know, weird... Uh, techniques. Basically, it'll tell you how far away you are from home based on the two compasses. And obviously, at 10 blocks apart, they point exactly the same way at only 100 blocks away. But with much further apart lodestones, you could do more interesting things to allow you to see thousands of blocks worth of distance in a much smaller space. So in this example, we take our second lodestone compass and we put it literally over 100 blocks away. And again, for a really long time, they point in very opposite directions, but you can use the oppositeness of their directions to roughly assume how far away from spawn you are. Once you're the same distance away from both as they are from each other, they'll point diagonally. Oh, they're in the wrong slide, say. So they'll point kind of diagonally in different directions, just like this. And then once you are a distance which is uh, about double that, the angle will get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner until eventually, once you pass, say, a thousand blocks in this case, they'll be pointing the same direction, in which case you'll know you're very far away from home. Again, using a single lodestone, very easy to understand. Using a couple of lodestones might require some maths, but it is pretty cool that you can use this to work out not only the direction of home, but also the distance from it, uh, if you want to do a bit of maths. And most people don't, let's be honest. But I want to, I you know, for those of you out there who do like the opportunity to get a little extra ability by doing some mental maths, now you get that inside of Minecraft. And who doesn't love this at least a little bit? Also, it's just really satisfying. Look at the hot bar as we do this. Very fun to just see it slide to the left, slide to the right. Anyway, let's move on to the other overworld feature because one of Minecraft's long-standing issues is the fact that Minecraft villagers grow wheat. It's one of their most common growths. However, when the farmer villagers and indeed any other villager picks up wheat, uh, it means pretty much nothing to them. They store it in their inventory, but they don't do anything with it, which means that you can't breed villagers by having uh, villagers have a bunch of wheat. And that's weird given that it's Minecraft's most common crop. It doesn't make any sense, right? However, if you give Minecraft villagers wheat now, they actually can take the wheat and they can craft it into bread. They can use that food source as a way to breed. And then as you're about to see right here, it looks like immediately after getting it, they're ready to breed. And look at that. We've got a baby villager already. Super cute, super adorable. A thing they fixed in this update, which makes a lot of sense because before this, you had to give them potatoes. You had to give them uh, beetroot. You had to give them uh, carrots. Or you could give them bread, which you crafted yourself. You couldn't give them wheat because they didn't craft it into bread, even though like it's a food source that they grow in their village. And if they can't craft it doesn't make any sense it's a cool little update in my opinion i'm glad they've added it alongside everything else here and yeah this is a cool little update to the never update i wouldn't say it's the biggest snapshot we've ever seen we are expecting a never update beta later today so uh perhaps tomorrow we could check it out if any of you are still curious however as far as features go yeah this is the update however we have a few other key things in this uh you know video i want to go over 
Anyway, while we're here, we do have some other news to share because a lot of people like when the news videos kind of coalesce into one place. So here is all the news for the week. You also have the fact that Cornerhard MC, who works on the Realm Steam for Minecraft, um, actually, uh, you know, uh, confirmed this week something very exciting because he said in the Nether update, you'll be able to kick and ban people from the game. Banning is just for Realm owners, but anyone with operate positions will be able to kick in any type of game, including LAN games and self-hosted dedicated servers. That is a very exciting thing to hear. Um, obviously, as someone who runs a lot of servers, you've probably seen one of them somewhere. As someone who runs a lot of servers, like, yeah, it's very exciting to finally be able to kick and ban. The fact that Minecraft, the biggest multiplayer game in the world, didn't have a kick function. If someone came into your world and you didn't want them there, you had to politely ask them to leave or you could remove their, you know, permissions to do anything, but you couldn't get them out of your game. That was ludicrous and ridiculous. If someone is in your game and you do not want them there, you should not be required to keep them there, has been my opinion. And uh, yeah, Minecraft uh, clearly agrees based on this. And you can actually see there was some inter uh, internal opposition to this uh, because Mark Watson, who is another part of Minecraft, actually said like, what's the use case for this? Because they had flashbacks to IRC, where it was abused by admins to harass people, but banning them would reduce the size of their kingdom. Or in other words, saying like, you know what, if having that ability can be a bit abusable, but it's just a simple thing as like, you know what, banning people permanently makes sense, but kicking people allows you to have something for, you know, your operators to use as a way to temporarily deal with a problem without having to necessarily, you know, ban all the way. I think it's fair, so you never accidentally get, you know, permanently banned from something by someone who isn't the owner. Again, if I don't want you in a world that I have made, if you don't want me in a world you have made, it should be your right to say, please don't come in here. Uh, whereas right now, again, Minecraft, is open by default. Someone can come in your world, start griefing it, and if you don't know what to do, bad things can start to happen, and I don't really like that personally, necessarily. Anyway, another thing that I find really interesting is that Minecraft is working on parity between Java and Bedrock. That's a key part of this 1.16 update. I mean, this is the first update that will be 1.16, the same version number, same version name, same actual update between Java and Bedrock. It's slightly bigger on Bedrock because it's including the 1.15 update, but this is huge news um, for that, but you know, for the versions, it means we're gonna finally have an update that makes the sense, uh, you know, same name, same sense, etc. between platforms. However, it's also gonna be a parity update in a few other ways. This includes the fact that they're trying to work out how certain Bedrock exclusives, which were clearly added like on a whim, uh, as to whether they should remain uh, Bedrock exclusives, as to whether they should be removed to match parity of Java, or whether Java should be used to match parity for them. An example of this is uh, they're looking for input as to whether bone mill and sugarcane should make it grow faster. And they're asking for the community to vote as to whether it should or shouldn't. The vast majority of people think that it should. I mean, it's one of those features that isn't on Java that just seems like a logical thing. Like, why doesn't bone mill work there? I mean, it works on bedrock, why not there? Um, so yeah, this is the sort of thing they're gonna be using. It's a way of taking a difference between bedrock and Java, which seems like it makes sense either way and deciding which sense makes the most sense. In the case of bone mill and sugarcane, it's different on both platforms, but neither feels like they're wrong. You know, there are some things that are objectively worse on different platforms, such as, you know, the not being able to kick people on, uh, you know, bedrock, even though you can do it on Java. What happens if you kick yourself from your own world? I don't want to know, actually. But, um, <laughs> you know, like, when there are features which are clearly missing, it's like, huh, yeah, that is a parity mistake. But when there are features that make sense in both versions, that's when you need to start working on this sort of thing. And the fact that they're this advanced in the changes is something I find very positive, personally. But I do have an important update from Minecraft regarding the state of updates in the current situation in the world that you can't talk about on YouTube without getting demonetized. So, um, yeah, there is a thing happening in the world. Don't know if you guys have heard about it. Very small-scale issue. Um, definitely not affecting most wide European um, and North American countries. However, there's a little bit of a thing going through the world right now, and uh, people question, given that Minecraft is located partly in Washington and partly in Sweden, two countries which are obviously, or two places that are currently going through a big pandemic that you don't say the name of on YouTube. So given that that's happening, a lot of people were quite concerned, and we had a response from Je uh, Jeb about the fact that like, wait, if you're all working from home, will this affect Minecraft updates? Jeb confirmed that no, it will not, and this is something I'm really glad to hear, because um, a lot of people say like, oh, it's trivial, like they shouldn't be working on Minecraft in a time like this, it's non-essential. But no, keeping people entertained during times of crisis is something that I think is super essential. I mean, um, you know, the amount you can keep people indoors just by releasing a brand new Animal Crossing game or a brand new Minecraft update, or indeed a brand new Minecraft game to combine both those things together. I mean, Minecraft Dungeons is the bomb. I played it earlier on the channel, if you are curious. Um, it is something that really is super useful, not only in times of crisis, but in times of non-crisis, 
it is something that is, you know, again, games are a form of art in some ways, but they're also one of the most important things that can keep people, uh, you know, like occupied, can bring joy to people's worlds. Um, in an age where, you know, things aren't all physical, many things are digital, the value of someone's Minecraft world, the value of a new batch of Minecraft content, it might not seem like an easy thing to quantify, it might seem like it's all silly because it's all just bits, but Minecraft is super important, and people have tried to downplay that, um, are just downplaying one of the things that the world values very highly. And if you if you if you don't value things that people value, sure, have that opinion, but it doesn't make it right. It's really easy to criticize other people's passions as being illegitimate. It's really easy to take the almost 200 million people who play Minecraft as saying, oh yeah, but they're just playing something dumb. But this is a very big thing. This is a very big part of the world. And, um, you know, when there is a Minecraft update, you better believe it's a cultural shock. You better believe it's a thing that matters not only to me, but to many others. And yeah, if people want to try and minimize that for you or for anyone else, uh, just let them know. Nah. That's, that's not how this one really works. If you disagree, let me know in the comments down below. I really, uh, you know, feel strongly about this one, but I'd love to hear your opinions as always uh, on these snapshot features and all the other stuff uh, coming within them. And uh, it looks like it's a pretty killer week for Minecraft, given that we've seen the Dungeons beta drop at the same time as a brand new Never Mob, uh, at the same time as it looks like a brand new 1.16 Bedrock uh, beta, which might bring some new things, or yeah, maybe it's just update Java. We don't know until it comes out. But what we do know is that I hope you will enjoy this video. I hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.